life. But some argue the violence are, are one thing. Others say they could be addicting. But believe it or not, the FDA has now approved the first prescription video game. Tech analyst James Chernowski from Young Voices up late with me on the Final Five live tonight to break this down. Are we talking, uh, are we talking uh, Animal Crossing? Are we talking Tetris? Are we talking Mario Kart? What, what kind of, uh, what kind of, what, what are we talking here, James? Honestly, Jim, it's it's kind of like a, a relatively rudimentary kind of game, not anything fancy. You don't mm -hmm. have to worry about like, you know, intense graphics like you get in Call of Duty or whatever. But this is a this is actually a pretty interesting game that tries to go and target children with ADHD and help them with their with their th with their problem there. So it's very interesting to go and see. So so it's called what? It's called Endeavor. Yes, it's called Endeavor RX. Okay, so so this I, and honestly. You know, it, it's funny because I came up in the age before of ADHD. We were calling it ADD at the time. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I think the, the prescription was always Ritalin. I mean, I feel like it was always a medical approach. So, so how do video games figure into this now? Well, it's an interesting thing because video games have actually been a part of this for a very long period of time. It, there's been a lot of clinical studies done that can show just how video games have been helpful with helping uh, kids with different kinds of problems, whether that's ADHD or helping them learn how to do uh, problem solving. Mm -hmm. So video games have actually been a pretty interesting kind of approach. So there's actually a room for video games to help in the process of overcoming some of these issues that children face today. But the notion that you have to go and get like a doctor's right. note to go and play it seems crazy. So, so but, but I mean, this is not something that you go to CVS or Walgreens for, right? I mean, if you get a prescription for a video game, first of all, how do you how do you go about getting it? I mean, yeah. is, do you pay? I mean, is, are we talking about like a prescription drug where you're paying, you know, a, a, a very high amount for it or, or does insurance cover it? Well, the, the thing is, is that we don't actually know what the price of this video game is going to be just yet. But given the fact that this company is trying to go through this process with the FDA to have this label on there, mm -hmm. they're going to go through insurance companies. And whereas, like, if you wanted to go and buy a video game today, it's about 50 to $60. Right. I guarantee you the price of this video game is going to be a <laughs> lot more than that. It's kind of amazing because we've always talked about, I know as, as a kid who grew up with a Nintendo entertainment system with Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt and I had the power pad and I tried to sell my parents on the idea that it was a great idea because it can help my hand-eye coordination and that was the selling point right there. I think that that was one reason people said video games really served a, a, a therapeutic benefit. This just takes it to a whole new level. Yeah, it really does. And, and honestly, as a person who's played video games my whole life and done it professionally for a period of time, I, I loved video games. It was a great way for me and my dad to go and connect. And, yeah. and I certainly did the same thing with selling my mom on it. It's good for me. It's to go and help with the hand-eye coordination stuff, right? <laughs> and, and, you know, uh, this is actually really interesting stuff. But I do think that it's unfortunate because the FDA doing this kind of a process right. goes and will cut off so many kids from having access to it, ultimately. So is this something that would supplant current ADHD techniques, treatments, or is this designed to be a supplement to that? No, it's not going to go and replace any kind of existing treatments for ADHD. It's meant to be a supplementary kind of thing. Mm -hmm. The study that came out that analyzed this video game said about 30% of kids that did this video game experienced improvement with their ADHD. But even that study admits that it can't go and replace existing models for treating ADHD. So look, I know that this is sort of going into the weeds when we talk about this, but I, when, I, when I, we had the story, we first learned about this uh, a couple of weeks ago, and then we got some more information on this. I mean, is this is this something you download? Is this is this for a certain platform? I mean, is it for Xbox? Is it for PS4? Or I mean, how how do, how do you go about getting this if you are prescribed it? Honestly, um, I, I do not know okay. what the method that they're going to use for a platform is. Yeah. But I do know that right now they have a website where you would go and sign up to be on their waiting list to get Jeez. access to their product. What, what I mean, th think about think about like the video games that, that you play. Think about like through all of your time gaming. What would you say? Could you think of a game that to you, you felt after you played it, it did something for you in terms of, you know, making you sharper, maybe testing your, your judgment, really something that you felt better physically after playing? Is there anything like that that you can think of? Yeah, no, there's there's a whole host of games that are great at, at really heightening certain kinds of skills that you want to do. One game that I always love playing, 
is EVE Online, which is really good at helping develop interpersonal relations and also being able to kind of analyze situations and figure out how you can go about solving issues that can come up. So that's just like one kind of example. But even like in the running gun games like Call of Duty, mm -hmm. you actually do pick up some really good skills of understanding like depth perception, for example. Yeah. Games that do those actually have really good depth perception skills relative to an average person. James, all I'm saying is if there's anybody who's watching this show who, and, and look, we, get, we have a nice audience. Maybe there are people who, who are preteens or teens. I just love the fact that we're giving people information that they can go to their parents and say, see, video games are good. The guys on TV said it was. Yeah, no, I, I think it's hilarious. If I went to my mom today and told her that, <laughs> no, it's okay, I can play the games. I have the doctor's note. I think she'd like <laughs> be so shocked and be like, what are you talking about? I know, right? For video games? Uh-huh. <laughs> all, all this is going to do is get me to go home and, uh, and, and play Madden, I think, tonight. All right. Hey, James Stranowski, we got to go. Thanks for staying up late, man. It was good to see you again. Thanks for having me, Jim. Absolutely. Final Five comes back after this.